Okay. Buzz, that was so official. <laughs> I really felt like I really felt like we were in a real studio and not talking to a cell phone for a second there. Oh, wait, so I can see us. Oh, hello, everyone. We're here in the Sideshow Podcast Studio, which we don't use much anymore. Yeah. I'm with Selena. Hi. Uh, we make size as well as a lot of other people in this building. Um, and Savannah, correct me if I'm wrong. What we're about to do is I, like, I have a bunch of postcards to sign you do. to thank people, uh, which we did this thing. I guess we should start. We did this thing uh, because sometimes people don't want to support uh, Patreon because it's like, why would I sign up to give every month? I don't know what next month's going to be like. So instead, we said you could give us the average amount that people give us over the year on Patreon with the 60 bucks and we'll send you a postcard uh, and I'll sign each one of them. And so what we're doing is we're going to be stamp. I'm signing, you're stamping. Mm -hmm. We're doing the work that we're going to have to do. We're just doing it on a live stream. Yeah. And in addition to that, you're going to ask me questions. Yes. So every time we sell a post, right. Okay. I get a uh, question. There's going to be a question. It's one of the old sideshow quiz show questions. I have a giant I should push I I we're, yeah, we're not just we're not just uh, testing whether or not I know stuff, but te testing whether or not, not I know stuff. I should definitely know. But you've definitely you've definitely already heard every single question. Oh, yeah, uh, it's going to suck when I get them wrong. Um, uh, so if you get a question right, yeah, it's fine. Right. If you get a question wrong, you have eat one of these cookies that have provided have been provided to us by uh, our master chef Raven. Some of these are delicious okay. and wonderful. Some of them are hiding a terrible secret. Uh, <laughs> and you I find, I find out when I find yeah. out. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, right now, I guess we should start. I, I can cure myself a little bit. <laughs> I, can, I can work through it. Uh, right now, I guess we should start to audio is horrible. Thanks, Eric. Jeez, say it in a nicer way. Oh. Oh, up the sound. We look it right over there. Oh, the sound. Sound doesn't work. Trying to turn mics up. I want you to just get closer to them. Is this better when I'm really close to the mic? This is me testing the mic. Now I'm waiting to hear if this is better. We've got about a 15 second delay. Yeah. Yes, it is better. Incredible. Okay. Well, we're closer. Right, we'll just get very close to the mic. That's easy. Maybe. We'll see. Hello. If it's easy or not. I I don't want to peek. I don't have audio monitoring, so I don't <laughs> know how I sound. Um, also, for those of you on TikTok, uh, go to YouTube. It's better. And also oh not side road. TikTok not side is on the floor. TikTok is Where on the floor. Uh, <laughs> that is the only angle we can get for TikTok. That is, on, yeah, the, you get, yeah, you get the real authentic view on mm -hmm. TikTok. It's just shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have heard that the cookies smell weird. They do. Uh, but I'm going to try not to smell them beforehand. There's, there's not much we can do about that. Okay. Smells just happen. Um, so what we do here at SciShow, I should start signing because I do have to do that part. Also, this is the first time I think the audience is seeing the postcards. Yeah, so, this is what they look like. Yeah. There's a little thank you postcards. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. And I lost my Sharpie, so I'm going to grab another There's Sharpie. many more Sharpies. <laughs> Immediately. Mm -hmm. And I have stamps, so. Um, so what I can say is with SciShow, what we do pretty straightforward. We try to, oh, Starla grabbed the black one, but it changed colors, so oh. like a magic trick. Interesting. Not all of them are magic. Some of them are just plain Sharpies. So the, the magic ones are special. Maybe you'll get a special postcard. This one is a star. Oh, well, you're not going to get that special postcard. <laughs> now we'll try to get this one. I'm going to be signed three times because that one's tip is also dry. Incredible. Me metallic ones, they don't last forever, in my experience. Oh, yeah, black. There we go. They really know. The, the, this is the first one. 
if you get this one. <laughs> oh, you got a sign underneath the copy on the right. That's where, that's where the address goes. That's where the address goes. Well, no one's getting that one. <laughs> <laughs> now we know that. Um, so, yeah, it's, not so, it's, it's a bit of a tricky business model. The entire idea is that we have to be very good and accurate mm -hmm. and, uh, and capture people's attention. Uh, in a world where there are people who only want to do that last thing, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's oh, we got an order. Ooh. Thanks, Jay. Uh, early on, let's do a quick, let's do a question every every five. Every five. Every five. All right. So we've got our first one, and uh, what we. For every like uh, ten thousand people who uh, watches a SciShow video, oh, I should give these to you so you I, can stamp. I was waiting until your thought was finished, but to, yeah, I do need to stamp these. Uh, for every ten thousand people who watch a SciShow video, one of those is in some way, whether it's like a YouTube membership or it's one of these postcards uh, or it's a Patreon patron. And that's how we can do the show. Like, I'm pretty familiar with the budget as not just the host of SciShow, but it's founder. And, and executive. executive producer. That's what my type. Thank you. Yes. Um, and, uh, and so the thing to try to do is figure out how to, like, we can like we it's out it's on us to like capture the attention get people to click on us figure out how to how to make great content but because it co it's just always going to cost more for us to do it than if we were to suck at it that the reason that we can do it is because of our patrons and we've had a lot of people join on patreon over the last who knows how long um over the you know the, since since we started we this, since we uploaded this postcard video, uh, about eight hundred is that right? Eight hundred new patrons, which is super amazing, and uh, and we had about a thousand people order these cards, mm -hmm. maybe a little more than that. We were eleven hundred okay. last time yes. we checked, a little more than that. So I got eleven hundred cards to postcards to sign, mm -hmm. and I got one stack over here, but then there's two, gi three giant four. box, four giant boxes down there, which. That's the job. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes over the break, you think, I want to do this. And then it's like, oh, you're going to have to sign a lot of boxes, my man. Mm -hmm. Savannah. Yes. What do you do at SciShow? I am a producer and also a host. And every time I've introduced myself to a new person in a work context recently, I explain my producer jobs. And then I forget to say that I'm a host. And someone else on the call goes, also you host. And I'm like... <laughs> Right, I do do that. That is true. Uh, I do. I am. <laughs> my face is on these contents sometimes. Uh, and as a producer, I am organizing a lot of the merch stuff. I'm organizing a lot of the uh, TikTok and shorts content. And I also help out on yes. uh, the main YouTube SciShow channel by uh, approving thumbnails and watching a lot of proofs. So, uh, Basically, every time we make an episode, uh, one of the editors will make an episode and, you know, put all the graphics together and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Before it gets uploaded, we have to watch it back to make sure, you know, there's nothing weird in it. Like, yeah. like sometimes you'll export a video and there's like a weird glitch and it's like, yep. oh, man, there's a weird glitch here or like, you know, a typo or something. The editors are great. There's not a lot of typos. Uh, <laughs> but um, they, I mean, you I, I remember a, a, a crash course going live once where like it was just like it said welcome to Austria except it said welcome to Ostia or something mm. it was just like right in the beginning the giant sign uh, it's very hard to see things sometimes yeah it's very hard to see things sometimes but yeah so there's that job if somebody's got to watch the video before it goes live mm -hmm. sometimes the freaking software makes the mistake yep. you know Sometimes you uh, export something and there's a big, there's several fr fl ugh, several frames of a black screen before the episode starts. And you're like, what happened? 
Why yep. did why did this happen? Um, I mean, the TikTok editor has been doing this to me more and more, where I like. I will push the button and it will start recording video but not audio for like mm. five, like, you know, for like half a second. Mm. And this is like completely ruins it for me. Have you cleared your cache recently? No. Okay. Should I clear my cache? I got a new phone and that problem went away for me. Oh. I'm not saying buy a new phone, but I am saying clear it your cache. All, it is, my phone is getting old. Um, my phone screen died a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> So, Your phone screen just died. Yeah, the screen like it was still functioning, but you just couldn't see anything. Yeah, uh, and it was because uh, moisture got in it. Don't bring your phone in the shower to listen to podcasts oh, and stuff. Oh, I do that all the you time. Gotta, you gotta, you gotta, get a separate uh, Bluetooth speaker and put oh, that in the no. shower with you. And I, then... But I like, I mean, <sighs> needing to listen to a podcast while you're in the shower <laughs> is a real like 2024. Yeah. Uh, pathology i feel like it is not all the time it is only when i have to wash my hair which takes a very long time i have a lot of hair <laughs> um. uh, i would like to say thank you to a few people right now we have now sold one two three four postcards so if you uh, if you go there's a link in the description to buy these postcards which we are signing for you right now um, there's people peeking in the door as if we're not going to notice. <laughs> Hi, Hiroka. <laughs> Hiroka is another producer on SciShow. Um, and uh, to support the work that we do at SciShow that, so that the, you can be what, like the goal is to go from like one in every 10,000 people support the show to like two in every 10,000 people support the show, which is a doubling, but also, uh, still a, a fairly small percentage. So if you happen to be a person for whom this is an achievable thing to give us $60 because you think SciShow is worth $60, basically $5 a month. Um, and we'll send you this, this postcard that I'm signing for you right now and that Savannah is stamping. And I wanna say thank you to Addison for getting a postcard. Thank you to Sol, S-O-L. Uh, thank you to Dustin. Thank you to uh, Crystal. And also again, thank you to Jay, which actually is five. Oh, that's five. That actually okay. is five. So. Uh, the plan happens where every time we sell five postcards, I am asking Hank, one of the old SciShow Quiz Show questions. If he gets the question right, all is well. If he gets the question wrong, he eats a mystery cookie that might be delicious and might be terrible. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> yes. I'm going to do, uh, Buzz, can we actually do question number 24? First? Oh, we're going to put, are, is there a graphic? Yeah, there's a, I, you know how like after in the SciShow Quiz Show, the host reads the question, and then after there's the answer, there's like a little blurb where like there's ed edited all nice and has the graphics with it and everything. We yeah. have those little things queued up. You like still have them? Yeah, I just oh. I, I just went through and pulled a bunch of them, so we got those. Amazing. Uh, so, okay, here we go. Uh, it's question number twenty-four. So back in the nineteen thirties, skim milk, or the kind with most of the fat skimmed off the top, was mm -hmm. actually considered a waste product. Oh. Many factories dumped gotcha. their leftover skim milk into local rivers. Oh. Then someone came up with a better and more eco-friendly idea. They started taking casein, a common milk protein, uh -huh. and using it for something else. Was it? They turned the protein into fertilizer. They spun the proteins into fabric. They fed the casein to the cows to make them extra strong. Or they melted the casein into bricks. They made it into shirts! They did make it into shirts. They did. And they kind of smelled bad? They did kind of smell bad. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that because they kind of smelled bad. <laughs> we got the clip. The answer is B. They turned the casein into fabric. Today, casein is used for all kinds of things including protein supplements. But back in the 1930s, one of the first alternate uses for it was fabric. The protein was collected from all that leftover skim milk, then dissolved in a chemical like formaldehyde until it became thick and viscous. After that, it was processed through a series of machines that turned it into a fiber that could be used for fabric. Casein fabric was used in everything from clothing to car upholstery. It might sound a little weird, but it's not the most ridiculous idea. Wool is also a protein. 
although it's mixed in with a few fatty lipids. Unfortunately, casein wasn't as durable as real wool, and it also tended to smell a lot like sour milk after a while. So by the late 1940s, people were kind of over it. Can't imagine why. Still, casein fabric might be getting a second life. In 2011, a German clothing company started making clothing almost entirely out of casein. Thankfully, though, chemistry has advanced to the point the fabric doesn't have that sour smell anymore. Also. Hello, we're back. Hi. Thanks, Olivia. <laughs> uh, Olivia is back in town, and uh, her kid goes to my, my same school as my kid, so oh. we see each other all the time now. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, good old SciShow quiz show. Uh, we're gonna have to do if the questions are that easy we're gonna mm -hmm. have to do more okay we're gonna have to do it more frequently yeah. what do we got let's go back over to my oh uh no that's the same that's the same madison unless i need to refresh um oh no helen thank you thank you helen for your support of scishow and making the world uh have more good science content in it Uh, so if you're wondering what we're doing, I've, uh, cause you just, you just showed up 433 of you. I am, uh, we're signing and stamping postcards to send to people who have supported SciShow. If you would like to be one of the people who support SciShow, there's a link in the description. You can get one of these postcards. Basically what you're saying, if you get one of these postcards is I think that SciShow is worth $5 a month for the next year. Uh, and for many people, I totally get that's not in the budget for this, this semester <laughs> of, yeah. yeah, life. But for, I think, many other people, maybe we got, we, we got those, maybe we got that ability. We can do it. My friend Isaac made these shelves. Mm. I love these shelves. Yeah. I love a good shelf, and I love the shelves here so much. Yeah. Yeah, Isaac made, like, this exact same shelf for here and for upstairs. Mm -hmm. And for the Roxbox studio. Oh yeah, which is it used, it was a different studio at one point, and we have since repurposed it into the Rocksbox yes. Studio. Hiroka and Sam did a and and Madison, who all work on SciShow. Um, Hiroka is a different another producer in addition to me. Um, Sam is the creator. Cre no, sorry. De what is his new title? Design creative director. Director oh, of art and design. Oh, okay. Right, because the abbreviation is Dad. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, Madison, who is an editor and also a videographer, uh, made the Rocks Box set, and it looks super, super that cool. Looks dope. Um, yeah. And that's also another thing that patrons allow us to do is experiment with cool new formats and setups. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Thanks for doing that, and thanks for buying postcards. Big thank you to Bjorn. Uh, so now we're th we're three away from asking another question, and maybe we'll ask me questions until I get one wrong. Because frankly, I'm hungry. All right, that's <laughs> honestly, I, I respect that. And if I get a question wrong, then I have to eat a cookie, and mm -hmm. maybe the cookie is good, and maybe it's bad. Now, here's what I do know: I'm not gonna eat all those cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I could eat a well, bite of all of those cookies. Well, I, my personal take is that yeah. the only way to guarantee you eat every cookie here is if we sell out of postcards. Which is I'll eat huge. all the cookies if we sell out of postcards. Yeah, which is huge. Which won't. It's, it's quite the stretch goal. That's not occurring, uh, which is why yeah. I feel confident in yeah. saying this. Uh, but it, but that is because you are required to answer a question for each cookie, and we have twenty four questions and twelve right. cookies. So. Oh. Uh, but I could I could get all the questions right, and I never have to eat a cookie. Well, we'll come up with something else. That's right. You gotta get harder questions. Mm -hmm. It's it's wild what my brain holds on to. Yeah, that one was really interesting. So I understand why you yeah. you held on to that one. I love it because I uh, in grad school I did a whole thing about why people suddenly started caring about plastic pollution. Yeah, um, that was my thesis, and a lot of that was like the history of plastics. And I wrote, was reading this question, and I'm like, I remember this. I remember reading oh. about this while doing my degree. Well, so first time we polymerized something to make a fabric one of the first times the other one was a uh, bake light bake light yeah. yes and cell cellulo celluloid oh yeah Those that we the... made like uh pool balls and mm -hmm. film out of mm -hmm. my friend ate grass when we were kids and she threw up and it was deep orange why was that hank i don't know i have to eat a cookie now 
I definitely don't know the answer to that one. <laughs> uh, it sounds bad. Like it doesn't sound like the doesn't sound like the grass made it that color. It sounds like the body did. Like the body produced a lot of something to be like this is bad, and I'm trying to fix it. Yeah. Body said no, thank you. Body said no, thank you. And I'll make a thing, and gross, gross, thr gross, grossy pukes. Oh, Courtney, thank you, thank you, Courtney. Courtney from Pennsylvania. One, two, three, four. Got two more. Two more people come by. We'll get another chance to get one of those gross cookies in my mouth. Maybe it'll be a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the flavors here. Let's let's take a minute to talk about the flavors. Oh, what are they? Uh, there are four. There are two cookie shapes and four flavors. Oh. So the like more brownish ones, I yeah. believe, are the good ones. There are grapefruit sugar cookie. The bad ones there are not. Oh, I won't find out. I have You'll to find guess. Out. You'll find out. I'm excited to uh, figure out what to to make the guess. Mm -hmm. The for the white ones, the good ones are coconut lime. The bad ones are not. Okay, so uh, are the bad, bad ones all the same bad thing? Yes. Okay. Uh, Raven has informed me they are vile. Oh. So I didn't need to know that. <laughs> Maybe they're gonna be fine. Maybe they're gonna be fine. Everybody has different different taste preferences. Yeah. Sure. Um, I also have I have the cheat sheet right here okay. of what they actually are. So. All right. If you happen to find yourself in a position to be able to make uh, SciShow happen, uh, these postcards are for sale. We are uh, we've sold about a thousand of them, and we just got one new order. That one came in, so we need one more to, for another. It's from John, and John even left a little note, and the note says, "Thank you for everything you do." I'm also joining the Patreon. Well, John, why are you? Do that's just that's a John, lot. John, thank you. John, thank you. We appreciate you so much, John. You can leave a little note, by the way. And we'll definitely read the little note. And the little note might say, it might, you might just make me say fart noises. And that <laughs> would also be fine. I'll do whatever you tell me to do if you leave a note. That's, oh. that's a big ask. <laughs> that's a big ask. I will do whatever you do. Oh, Katie also left a note. It says, hi, Hank and SciShow team. Thanks for all that you do. Thank you, Katie. And that's five. That's five. All right. Uh. Hit me, Savannah. All right. So when we get every five postcards we sell, we ask me a question, and if I get it wrong, I have to eat a cookie. The cookie might be great, or it might be, quote, vile. All right. Uh, I'm picking number 14 of these questions. Uh, these are old SciShow Quiz Show questions, so Hank has actually heard the answers to all of these at some point. We'll see how my brain mm -hmm. works. While seven spot ladybirds or ladybugs to uh, Americans yeah, uh -huh. are red and black as adults, their eggs are vibrant shades of yellow to orange. Uh -huh. They stick out like a sore thumb pretty much anywhere the beetles lay them. Uh -huh. But that's not the only reason they're neat. These are the only insect eggs scientists have seen that demonstrate this well-known coloration phenomenon. Is it Crypsis, because it helps them stay hidden from predators. Crypsis. Okay. Disruptive camouflage, because it breaks up the egg shape visually. Okay. Aposematic coloration, because it signals toxicity, or Batesian mimicry, because it looks like something more dangerous. I'm definitely between C and D on this one, and I don't know for sure. I'm going to go with Batesian mimicry, It Savannah. is not Batesian ah, mimicry. What is it? It was aposematic coloration. Ah. Yeah. That was, the, that was C? It was C. So at least I was 50 yes. 50 right into yeah, it. You, okay. The, the SAT uh -huh. strategy did work. I'll, almost got you there. All right. Okay. Here are some things for you to stamp while I. And if you leave a message, if you order something on, uh, whoops, if you order a postcard and you leave a message, then I will read the message on, on the thingy. And I'm going to start with number five. I'm going to start with number five. Is that okay. an acceptable choice? Sure. I'm trying to not sniff it first and just go. Just go. No sniffing. It's delicious. Yes, that is, in fact, a grapefruit sugar cookie. I did get them backwards. Uh, 
I thought when you yeah. pointed to the obviously chocolate chip cookies and called them a grapefruit sugar cookie, that. Oh, because those have coconut in them. Okay. Yeah. See that. Those are the cute. I'm just. That's good. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much to John and Courtney and Bjorn and Helen and Addison for delivering me this delicious cookie. It was worth it. Mm -hmm. um, what else? We got another. We got. We got Rachel and Amber have also recently ordered these po these postcards. They did not leave little notes. They thought about it and then they were like, "Eh, it's too much pressure sometimes." It is a lot. It's it's, it's a lot of power to wield. I appreciate you for not wielding it. <laughs> um, certainly not too much. What other? What other? What would I say? What would I tell me to do? Bock like a chicken? Yeah, I also want chicken. I was thinking chicken dance. Oh, chicken dance. Yeah. Can you can you bock like a chicken without doing the chicken dance? Yes. You can. <laughs> why, why would you? Yeah, I feel like I would anyway. You order the postcards, Luis, or Luis uh, in the description. It says, get postcard here, complexity.io, right down below. Uh, several people have been like, oh, the view is much better than on TikTok. <laughs> yes. Yes. Those of you on TikTok, we're also on YouTube. And we are on YouTube. Is, that's the better view. You and can the actually, view is better. You can actually see Hank's face instead of his laptop. Yeah. And less of Where? Pressure. Yeah. I'm here, I promise. <laughs> um, Raven is glad I got started with a good cookie. Raven made the cookies. Thank you, Raven, yeah. for Raven, the cookies. Raven is such a delightful baker and always posts her uh baking mm. uh creations in our fun food slack channel uh and it's very interesting to see what she is working on recently so very exciting that yeah she is the one who made the cookies for this yeah. stream they're very good that, well that first one was anyway mm -hmm. um people are saying they, they also can't see my face but like you're fine <laughs> Look, we tried to figure out the microphone thing beforehand, and this is how it's working. Mm -hmm. You get what you get. <laughs> and then as soon as I, I guess as soon as I start like signing, I'm like, I'm like hiding behind the thing. Yeah. Yeah. You can move your table. You've got room if you don't need to hunch. But also, you can see. Oh, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Is the bad ingredient in the gross cookies a secret? Yes. I have to try and figure it out mm -hmm. when I eat a terrible cookie. Mm -hmm. They're 50-50, right? Yep. So 50-50, good, bad. I got luck. I got luck on my side, everybody. All right. So Amber and Rachel and uh, Amber again. The same Amber the twice. Same. This t Amber said, oh, uh, left this time left a comment. And it <laughs> says, Amber again, I need to know something about Savannah's sweater because it's amazing. Something about my sweater? Just tell us something about your sweater. Um, that, that's all I got. There's no, nothing specific, just something. Well, uh, people often say it's a dinosaur sweater, but it is more of a uh, Godzilla sweater because uh, these kind of dinosaurs did not stand upright. They stood more like forward, more like an ostrich. Mm -hmm. So if you see a, a T-Rex that's standing up, no, you didn't. Oh. It's, it should be more like... Ostriches stand up. Yeah, but they, they, they have their more... Their backs are flat and then their necks yes, go up. Their, that, that, like T-Rex backs were also flat. Yeah. That's why you see that I see more. I see that in the in the yeah. uh, animations these days. Yeah. The, the, if you see a T-Rex from like the 50s... Oh, yeah. It's, 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 look, it's up. Yeah. And it's like, nope. We don't God, it's that. cuter that way. Eh. I'm, I mean, I'm scared of it either way. Let's be <laughs> honest. If you buy a postcard, which are available at the link in the description, then one, you're helping it make, make it possible for SciShow to have fact checkers and script editors and graphics people and set design and uh, all of the things that make SciShow great. And uh, also, you can, I, We'll have to, we're two away from me answering another question and seeing if I'm gonna eat a gross cookie. And also, um, there was one last thing. Oh, you can leave us a little message. Yeah. You can leave us a little message when you check out, apparently. I don't actually know exa exactly how you leave the little message, but thank you to Amber and Rachel and Katie and John and Courtney and Bjorn and Helen and Addison and Sol and Dustin and Crystal and Jay, who have ordered so far. 
during this stream. Um, and also another order just came in. It's from Miranda. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you, Miranda. I love that name. It's one of my favorites. And I'm signing the postcards that will get sent to you. And we are now one away from another question. Do we want to play the, the answer from the last one? Oh, we didn't play the answer from the last one. Uh, I could actually, if, it might be a little easier if I just read the, read the one. Yeah, you can read it. I can read, I'll read it real quick. Read it. Tell me what that is. So, uh, ladybug eggs have aposematic coloration. Lots of brightly colored things are presumed to be toxic, and it's generally assumed they use these colors to warn yeah. those that might think they're edible. But these assumptions aren't often tested to see if they're true. The brightly colored eggs of seven-spot ladybird beetles are an exception. Their bright yellow to orange colors make them stand out against the leaves and bark that they're laid on, but that's not a problem because, like the adult beetles that lay them, these eggs are packed with toxic alkaloids. The toxins aren't responsible for the yellow hue of the eggs, though. That comes from carotenoids, yellowy and reddish oh. pigments, and not every egg is the same hue either. They can range in color from sort of a pale yellow to a bright orange, and scientists have shown that color indicates just how toxic they are. The more well-fed the adult beetles are, the oh. more toxins and colors they can equip their offspring with, so the bright color serves as an honest signal telling potential predators to find another snack. And that's true of the ladybugs? Mm -hmm. Ladybug eggs have alkaloids, and so do ladybugs themselves. And they're brighter mm -hmm. when they're more well-fed. Mm -hmm. It's an honest signal. It's so interesting because it has to be honest or else like people will learn people. Predators. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the other the other example there being Batesian mimicry. Right. And Batesian mimicry is when you are you're like, I'm brightly colored because right. because I'm toxic. Wink. And then no, you're not. Yeah. Because you're trying to look like something else that is, in fact, toxic. Yeah. I know that we know a lot of bugs that do that one. But I don't yes. know what they are off the top of my head. <laughs> oh, you know, the ones that look like the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll be, I'll be here all night. Uh, science guy Hank Green. Um, Batesy and Mimicry includes mm, the ones that look like monarchs. Yeah. But not monarchs, which actually are toxic. Don't eat butterflies. Oh, also, this is not bugs, but coral snakes and king snakes. Yeah. Red touches yellow. Mm -hmm. Something. Just don't. You see those colors, you run. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> snaky, snaky, snake. You're sitting there. No, no, no. You're trying to remember the rhyme, and you're like, no, thank you. I'm just going to leave. Out of a roll of stamps. Can someone help me with my chemistry? Oh, good job. Can someone help me with my chemistry homework? What is the difference between hydrates, getting water added, and normal salt? Like, why is the energy and temperature so different? Oh no, I feel like I sh should be able to help with that, but I feel like I can't. <laughs> the only thing I remember about hydrates is that you put a dot H2O. That's like literally the only thing yeah. I remember. I don't know. I don't feel like I didn't learn very much about hydrates. Oh, that and we found hydrates when the, when the Soviets did the Cola Super Deep Borehole. Yeah, so there's a lot of hydrates in in Earth and also yeah. uh, in geological systems. Seems like in all planets or all rocky planets, um, there's a lot of hydrates on Mars. Nice. It's just like it, the, the water isn't water anymore, you know. It's yeah. It's and sometimes people will be like, "There's like a whole ocean under the," and I'm like, "That's not an ocean. That's just water bound uh. in chemistry." Mm. And if you like warmed it up or took the pressure out, then that water might come out. But I know it's rock. It's rock. We I had an argument with my son about whether ice was rock recently. He was like, "No, it's not." And I was like, "Why not?" Mm -hmm. He was like, "It's not." <laughs> so inorganic solid. Yeah. Yeah. Inorganic solid. I mean, like, it's rock. Special rocks box episode. We send people <laughs> an ice cube tray. <laughs> Has to be in like one of those Hello Fresh packs, yeah. so it stays cold. If the ladybug pees on you, it's actually squeezing alkaloids out of its knees. Says easily said and done. I believe you. I guess we we should have had an on stream fact checker. Yeah. We have another amber, but it is a different amber this time. So okay. it's time for another question. 
Thank you, Other Amber. Thank you. Uh, in Iowa. Thank you, Other Amber from Iowa. Okay. I uh, hope that the Super Bowl was good for you. I feel like Iowa probably cares about Kansas City. It's close by, right? They don't have they don't have like a professional sports team in I Iowa, do they? Think so. College teams. Are you from Iowa? <laughs> okay, I got one. I got one. We're doing number six. Okay. All right. Uh, at least one researcher has experimented with breeding fruit flies to live on other worlds, specifically Saturn's largest moon, Titan. In 2011, a bio artist created special chambers to mimic the conditions on Titan and started breeding colonies of flies to adapt to them. He hoped to create a whole lineage that could survive there, which he planned to call Dros Drosophila Titanus. Okay. Uh, obviously, living on Titan would require all kinds of adaptations, yep. but which one of the following is not a condition the bio artist had to worry about? What's a bio artist? Uh, somebody who like messes with DNA to make oh. new creatures out of okay. stuff, or I guess breeds them. I'm not exactly sure what this guy did, yeah. what his process was, but he was trying to create a new breed of flies. Okay. Uh, and if you would like to participate in this fun time, <laughs> there is, we're make, we're signing postcards that we're selling to support SciShow. Mm -hmm. uh, they're $60 each, which is $5 a month, which is what the average patron gives. But instead of giving once a month, you can just give all at once if you happen to be in a situation where you can do that. And every time somebody donates, uh, we get five. Uh, every time there's five of you, I get asked a question, and then I will eat, if I get it wrong, a cookie. And it might be delicious, or it might be vile. Vile cookies. Vile. Okay. okay. What are they? What did the bio okay. artist have as conditions okay. for this? Which of the following Why? did he not have to worry about? Okay. Methane rain, lower gravity, orange light, or decreased atmospheric pressure? Well, it's either orange light or decreased atmospheric pressure. You know, I think that Titan might have like, we're talking about Titan, right? Titan. I think it might have a similar atmospheric pressure as Earth. So I would go with orange light. The answer was decreased atmospheric ah. pressure. Yeah, it does in fact have orange light. It does not have decreased atmospheric pressure. I just didn't think that the yeah. flies would care about the orange uh, light. It, I mean, he had, apparently he did have to worry about that, but uh, the the air atmosphere is much thicker than Earth's, so oh, the surface pressure increase. is much greater. Oh, okay. uh, but we do have a clip explaining that better than I I will. Okay. In some ways, Titan seems like the perfect place to live, if you have to leave Earth at least. Its surface looks more Earth-like than pretty much anywhere else in our solar system, because it has lots of liquid flowing about, creating rivers, lakes, and other familiar features. It's just that the fluid is natural gas, not water. But still, it looks a lot like Earth. And there's likely some water flowing underground, which could help sustain the Earth-born flies. But there are a few other challenges that flies on Titan would have to face. For one, it only has 14% of the gravity that Earth's surface does, and it's always very cold. Its atmosphere is also made mostly of nitrogen and methane, which isn't great for breathing. But if nothing else, that atmosphere is much thicker than Earth's. That means the air pressure at the surface is much greater, so the flies would actually have to withstand higher pressure than they do here. <laughs> All right. We're back. That means it's cookie time. It's cookie time. All right. Well, I like the sugar cookie. So I'm going to go ahead and grab number, what does it say, 10? 10. Okay, I'm just grab number 10, which looks like a delicious looking, like uh, just a normal bake. Looks like the kind of cookies that you get when you cook cookies. Is that why they call them cookies? They're cookies. Because you cook them? I have no idea. I mean, in, in the UK, they call them biscuits. Because you bisque them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to biscuit. Yeah. What are you going to do to that thing? Go I on. shall biscuit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cook, cook cookie. I'm so scared. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's bad. Mm-hmm. It's one no, of the bad ones. It's good. No, it's one. It is one of the bad ones. It's, it's hitting me from two directions. Oh, oh. what? <laughs> Am I getting oregano? Uh, it, that is a garlic lime cookie. Okay, it was garlic. 
because it looks like coconut, but yeah, it's not coconut. Absolutely. Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. Um, it's got all the parts of a cookie that's good, which is. Con <laughs> oh God. But then it hits you from the side, uh -huh. and like it's garlic, but for some reason it also tastes like trash. <laughs> That's so weird. Because I hear garlic lime cookie and I'm like, I don't know, that sounds kind of good. Yeah. But it's something about it. No, I was assured it was vile and your reaction. Oh, no, thank you. Um, Whoo. Mm -mm. It's got a lot of garlic. <laughs> it's got a, a fair bit of garlic. Thanks, Raven. <laughs> I like. Mm, garlic is a lot. Garlic is a lot. I'm going to have another little bite of this other one. <laughs> <laughs> As a chaser. Mm -hmm. What do butterflies dream about? Electric caterpillars. Oh, yeah, I wonder. I wonder how butterflies feel about caterpillars. I was thinking about this the other day. I don't know at what point in history, like, you know, Western science, I guess, yeah, was like. Oh yeah, caterpillars and butterflies, those are the same thing. Yeah. Cause like cuz there's a plenty of species like now that we don't realize are the same species until someone does like a genetic test or something. Sure. So like how long did know. it take for some cuz cuz there, there was a time when people didn't get it. Yeah. But like I feel like it was like pre Yeah. language even. Cuz you you can also it's watch very it happen. Observable. Yeah. yeah. You can watch it happen in a way that you can't with these other species. So. Yeah. But then someone's walking up and being like Oh my God, I saw, you know those, that little worm thing? I watched it grow wings and fly away and someone yeah. else is like, yeah, buddy, try again. That's, you're, you're, <laughs> you're, 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 you're yanking my chain. There's a, there's a, uh, a fringe science belief. I've always wanted to do an episode that's just like fringe science beliefs. Mm -hmm. That uh, butterflies and caterpillars evolved separately and then somehow became the same species. How in the hell would that I don't work? know. It comes from the same woman who uh, first proposed that mitochondria were a separate species that was okay. incorporated into eukaryotic cells, which turned out to be yeah, true that, and that is very weird. That one is real. Yeah. Um, and uh, and she, she has had a number of, I think that she might have passed on, mm. but she has had a number of buck wild scientific thoughts, some of them... Uh, we did a microcosmos episode. Lynn Margulis, I think, is the person who's, I, if I'm not, if that's wrong, I feel bad for saying it. Because <laughs> that's definitely a scientist's name. Um, I think that's who it is. And uh, yeah, definitely not the case that butterflies and caterpillars evolved separately and then somehow merged together. But would be cool if it was. Sure. Um, I See, I... I can at least like understand the mechanism for how it works with mitochondria, but with with a butterfly and a caterpillar being too like I don't understand how you would. Nah. Yeah, I don't I know can't. how it would happen. Like, what would ha what would happen? How would what would happen? Yeah, I, it, does they have some kind of horizontal gene transfer thing that it's we don't weird. know about? Yeah. I, yeah. What did we just do an episode on? I don't think it's out yet. Oh, it was these flowers. That is not out yet. Oh my God, it's so weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil it, but <laughs> there's, there's these we cool flowers. We got a flower episode coming up and it's just like, oh, you thought you knew how anything worked? Uh-huh. It's like, what if species not, not? What if two species, one species? Yeah. My mouth feels weird. Is it from the cookie? Comes from the garlic. Do you, do you, well. Um, we we have gotten four orders. We've gotten one from uh, Ellen. Ooh. And one from Danielle. And one from Yida and one from Elizabeth. And Elizabeth left a note that says, oh, it's assigned to Brent. We can't do that. We That's, have, no. The, I'm sorry. We're, we're kind of doing this in large batches. Yeah, we ba we're batching them. Uh, so, so we don't know. I don't know how we would do that. Um. But I can say thank you to Brennan. I think Brett? I'd say Brett? Brennan, you you're great. I appreciate you. Yay. Uh, and Elizabeth, who is I assume uh, connected to you in some way. 
your friend or something. And then we've also got one from Mr. CJ. Was that five? That was five. All right. Question time. Unless, unless CJ has a thing he would like to read, to read out. No, CJ did not say anything. Okay, well, then we got a question. Okay, here's a fun one. This, okay. is, no, this is number 17. Where is he? In the United Kingdom. Ooh. Thank you, CJ. Oh, he might need another stamp. Yeah, the, CJ won't get one of these. Okay. Don't worry. We'll also, we got, All right. we got an international thing. All right, Got cool. a plan. <laughs> okay, uh, your question is, Convergent evolution is uh -huh. where a trait or feature evolves multiple times in unrelated species. How many times do scientists think flight has evolved? Two, four, seven, or 15? Two, four, seven, or 15. It depends on what you mean by flight. Do you mean powered flight or gliding? Uh, it doesn't say flight would be powered flight. So powered not flight. just like jumping off powered of a tree. Flight. Yeah. 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 Well, it's not two. It's definitely more than th bugs, mammals, and birds. That's three. And I bet bugs did it a bunch of different times. And I, I don't think birds did it more than once. Uh, but I bet bugs did it a bunch. And that's it, though. Fish don't do powered flight. They just jump and glide. But they can glide for a long time. Really? Yeah, flying fish, they can go. Yeah. They're goers. Nice. <laughs> Congratulations, flying fish. So what was it again? Two, four, seven, or 15? Seven. The answer was four. Ah, there was, it just did, Bugs just did it twice. Nope. Oh, it, who it, did I miss? Uh, it is birds, bats, insects, and pterosaurs. Oh no! Of course. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a clip and then you're going to eat a cookie. Oh, my mouth tastes bad. <laughs> so far as scientists can tell, flight evolved separately in four groups, birds, bats, insects, and pterosaurs, like pterodactyls. Considering how complicated flight is, that's pretty impressive. But what's also interesting is that biologists have yet to figure out exactly why flight evolved. Some of that is because flight is mainly a behavioral trait. So even if we can see things like wings or bone structure in the fossil record, we can't figure out what made animals take to the skies. Scientists hypothesize that flight could have been a way to avoid predators or a way to move around more easily. But at this point, those ideas are all just hypotheses. It's hard to know if we'll ever know for sure. And every five one of, ones of these that we sell, they're $60, which is, of course, more than the cost of a postcard, but it's less than the cost of SciShow. Uh, we will, every five of them, we, we are asking me a question, and then I'm eating a gross cookie uh, if I get it wrong. I just got one wrong, which means I'm about to eat a gross cookie. Maybe it's gross. It might be delicious. Or it might be terrible. I want desperately for it to be delicious because my mouth still tastes like garlic. <laughs> from the last one I had. Thank you to Summer, by the way, who just got one. When you order, if you order, you can send us a little note uh, that we can, we'll read. But also I'm just thanking everybody who gets one. Also for people in the chat, if y'all just wanna, uh, if y'all wanna uh, give me, what was I gonna say? If y'all wanna say anything, asking questions in the chat, we'll also be around there. You really want cookies now? Good job, Summer. Is the garlic the bad thing in all of them? No, nope. there's, uh, there's... So there's basically two shapes of cookie. Yeah. And there is a good and a bad to each shape. Yeah. Uh, so the good version of the garlic one is coconut. And the other one is either grapefruit, sugar cookie, or something else. Because we haven't discovered it yet. Yeah. I know what it is. Hank doesn't. I don't know what it is. But it's definitely one of these ones. I'm gonna grab okay. number seven here. Number seven. Savannah has a guide. I do.
There's something in that. Uh huh. There is. Is that a pepperoni? It's a pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a pepperoni parmesan grapefruit cookie. Oh. <laughs> I'm assuming with the grapefruit, it's not great fruit. It's just like the sweetness with the cheese. Mm. Ugh. Did that wash out the garlic? I mean, now that the cookie is mostly swallowed and the pepperoni's just hanging out, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Pepperoni's great. It's a, it's a protein. It's lunch. But the grapefruit and the sugar does not feel good. Mm. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. I, the, here's a question. Next time, I should try and go for a coconut, because that's the only one I haven't had yet. Mm -hmm. Now I have had two bads and one good. I started off with a good, but then I got a bad. If you would like me to eat more cookies, and I would love to, because I want to know what the good one tastes like, the coconut one. Um, SciShow, uh, where the, what we do is we make good science content. We try to capture people's attention. Uh, that's our job. We try to get people to watch stuff. We have to, and we try to compete with all the stuff on the YouTubes that's, uh, less good and the stuff that's good, but yeah. like we are, all, uh, there's a, there's, it's easier and easier to make content that sucks. Let's be honest. And it's a, you know, it's more expensive to make SciShow cause we have fact checkers and we got script editors and we got writers and we got graphics people and uh producers mm -hmm. and um just you know all of the things to make a company work and uh and so the reason we can do it is because of the one in ten thousand people who supports us financially so one in every ten thousand people who watch a scishow video will end up supporting us financially if that's what you uh might be then you can sign up for our patreon or you can buy one of these postcards which i am signing and savannah is stamping and we will send to you uh, they're sixty dollars, which is over the course of a year. That's five dollars a month, and but the, um, the postcards are a one-time sixty dollars. But they're one-time sixty dollars. You don't have to pay uh, monthly <laughs> to get a postcard. After pay, it's a lot of postcards. We no. will be live for about an hour or so. I have pepperoni stuck in my teeth. Mm. Not great. Anthony says butter versus lard versus margarine versus. I don't know what that means. Um, Hard tack what tier? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had a, I we had like a guy when I was in elementary school. It was like a one of the dads, and he was into like old sailing history, and he brought came in and he tied some knots for us, and then he made us eat hard tack, and that that stuck with me. So good job, that guy's dad. It's not good, hard tack. YouTube has been trying to get me to watch trash lately, and it's downright amazing how terrible a YouTube video can be. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, and let's check and see if we've had any anybody come through and order a SciShow postcard recently. Um, no. <laughs> Thanks, Summer, still. It's a, it's a dftba.com slash SciShow. You can get a postcard if you want to support us, or uh, you can... Just go get the link in the description. What stamps are you using, Savannah? These are sailboats. They're, they're, li they're little sailboats. Uh, Aaron was the one who purchased these yeah, that sounds stamps. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, sailboats were kind of the only option. And I'm like, that's okay. Sailboats are great. Yeah. We love a sailboat. Yeah. Aaron was like, what stamp should I get? And I was like, oh, obviously your call. And then when you need to get a lot of stamps, you just get the ones that they, mm -hmm. they give you. Last time I got stamps, there were... The, the the person at the counter was like, there, what stamps do you want? Do you want the otters? There are otters playing in the snow and they're so cute. And I really, really like the otters. And I said, I'll have the otters. <laughs> so, yeah. and they are very cute. You get commission? What's going on? I don't know. I think, she, I think this person was just very passionate about otters. Yeah. Yeah. Which, who, who's, who's not? Do you guys all live in the same part of the country? Alex asks. Uh, a big chunk of us do live in Missoula, Montana. That is where we film SciShow. Uh, yeah. But a lot of us are remote also. Uh, a lot of our uh, scripting editorial team is remote, lives all over the country. 
Um, and we also have an editor that lives on the, the, the other side of the country. Uh, so we're kind of all over the place. Yeah. But this is we do a lot, but a, a chunk of us live here. So, because otherwise, we've done remote filming before. It's possible. It's, it's it's difficult, but it's possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's there's definitely an advantage to being together. Uh, like file, big files are hard to move around. Mm -hmm. I is a surprising limitation, um, especially as. Like files keep getting bigger. If internet gets faster, but yeah. files get bigger. Yeah. When you shoot in 4K, it's like, oh my mm -hmm. god. Yeah. Also, here's the thing: we do shoot in 4K, so our files that we edit with are in 4K. But if you notice, the videos that we end up posting yeah. on the on YouTube are 1080p, and that's because we're filming in 4K, and then we're pushing in and pulling out and pushing in and pulling out, and so yeah. it just gives us that wiggle room in the editing. Back so. in the day. We used to reframe the shot. Oh boy! Between every shot, hey, that sounds like, annoying. The scripts would say like wide, medium, close, mo close, wide, medium, close, wide, medium, close, wide, wide. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad we don't much, do that. Much, yeah. It's been we've been doing this for so long. <laughs> Although I know with our new and exciting project that I can't fully talk about yet, there is a little more creativity in how our shots are set up. So that's fun. Yes. Because, yeah, there's a big and exciting project that we can't tell you about yet. There is. My inside of my mouth tastes so bad. <laughs> my tummy doesn't feel great either. Aside from scurvy, what diseases did sailors routinely encounter or deal with while on the high seas? I have a terrible story about this. Oh, no. Um, I don't know if I can tell it. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know mm. who's in the room right now. Mm. It's pretty gross. Uh, but I'll just say there were a lot of sexually transmitted diseases uh, and uh, transmitted in various ways and the and probably some ways that you're not thinking of because mm. that's what I'm think that's the thing I'm thinking of. It does make sense that sailors would get those. Yes, um, um, from each other and from yeah. various. Uh, and then, there were, uh, you know, you, you're gonna you're gonna have to deal with a lot of nutritional deficiencies, which scurvy is probably the most obvious and fast acting one of those. But there's lots of others, mm -hmm. so you could get like goiters from lack of iodine. Yep. You get you could get, but maybe they wouldn't have to deal with that. I don't know. Maybe you get iodine just from being out there. I mean, because sea salt is not yeah is not iodized, so I not I don't know. You're they right. Be absorbing it from the ocean, but. <laughs> Uh, just from the wind, just, no. There. What else is iodine in? I don't know. I don't know where. I don't uh, know where we get iodine. Like normally. Yeah. Um. Fish, maybe. I bet. I bet you could get it from fish. Berry, berry. That sounds bad. Amanda wants me to look up keokuk geodes. Look them up. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Why? Are they that good? Oh, one, two, three, four. We've had four Ooh. purchases since we last spoke. It means one more. One more. And maybe Hank eats a cookie. True, true. And so thank you to uh, Michelle and Robert and Steve and Emma. Um, we are currently signing and stamping the postcards that we will send to you if you order them. Um, and we figured since we were going to be doing that anyway, we might as well live stream during it, eat gross cookies, and answer science questions. So you can leave us a little message if you are checking out. And also you can, of course, leave us a little message in chat. I can look up Keokuk Geodes. Uh, also, I'm very excited. I know what next qu what question i'm going to do next because yeah. there is one that's pirate related okay which is very very fun and on on theme for our current conversation after you look up these geodes i like them i'm looking at them i don't know anything about them except that i like the ones i'm seeing right now should i read to you or i can click on rare keokuk geodes well those are very big if you spell it for me i can find a creative commons image we can show on stream k-e-o-k-u-k -K K-E-O-K-U-K. -K -E <clears throat> uh, 
Oh, I assumed that was going to be from Alaska for some reason, just because that's what that word sounded like to me. But no, it's from Iowa. Iowa? Iowa. Although geodes of different kinds are found all over the world, the greatest abundance and variety are found in the outcropping of the Mississippian Lower Keokuk Bed within a 70-mile radius of the intersection of the Mississippi and Des Moines Rivers. Southeastern, I Southeastern Iowa is one of the state's best geode-collecting areas. Geode State Park in Henry County is named for the occurrence of the geode. Neat. I didn't know that. Um, there's, so, there's so many things. Seaweed and codfish. Check out for iodine. I don't think that the sailors were eating the seaweed, though. Cookie roulette. Bismuth geodes for the win. That sounds like it. That's not happening naturally, though. And let's check and see if we had another order so we can do a question. Are you looking for a, a geode? Well, I, I think there is not any Creative Commons images of these geodes, except for the outside of them. So here's some rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Someone take pictures and release them <laughs> in the comments. Yeah. Uh, and Jennifer, Jennifer from Arizona. I'm not sure if that's an actual, is that a place? In Arizona? Or did you type that wrong? The address is AZ Arizona. Well. Which I think is just Arizona, Arizona. Well, DFTBA. They'll figure we'll it out. Figure it out. No, we'll figure it out. It'll get to you. Yeah. Uh I'm gonna view customer, make sure we have have an address that makes sense. Yeah. Yep, it just got it got confused. It's Phoenix, Arizona, Arizona. Jenny, thank you. Hank, we don't want to dox people. <laughs> it's just there's more than one Jenny in Arizona. <laughs> Phoenix is a big town. We don't want to dox people, but do we want to look up where, the house that they live in? Because I could do that. Don't do that. I could though. It's always available. If you don't mind me looking at your house. Put a little note. It says, "Yeah, you can look at you can look at Google Street View of my house, Hank. Do a little house review. Search you up on Zillow. I can see the inside of your house as well. Oh my gosh, it's weird. I the the have you ever done that to like an old place that you used to live? Yes. Yeah. Zillow is I I am the person on Zillow for fun. Oh, I'm so totally. Catherine's like Hank. Why are you looking at five million dollar homes in Los Angeles? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, why? Why aren't you? Yeah, yeah, because it's better than TV. Yeah. <laughs> Look at these people. I, the day that Zillow lets people comment on things. The, oh yeah. The world will. The world will be. I had a viral tweet about that. Ah, you did. Yeah. I, I'm not really on Twitter very much. I had a. Because <laughs> they have good bones. Oh, I do not want to eat not eat another gross cookie though. Oh, but it is time. It is time. We it got five. Time. Yeah, we. we Jenny, All right. Jenny was the last one. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, but we also got a message from David Ross, who says, "Hi, y'all are great." I was really hoping he was gonna say I could look at his house. <laughs> <laughs> Let me review your house on stream. Where? What in the world is in that room? What you got in that room? Here is. I'm the... signing postcards to send to you, David. All right. I found the pirate question. David this... in Seattle. This is number 20. All right. So, if you were thinking of joining a pirate crew, it'd be good to know whether you're one of those people who struggles with seasickness. Mm -hmm. If you've never been on a boat, though, you might have no clue. Luckily, scientists have studied seasickness over the years and discovered several traits that suggest whether you'll struggle to get your sea legs. Which of the following traits might be helpful for a prospective pirate since it's associated with a lower likelihood of experiencing seasickness? I remember this question. Being female, being out of shape, having a history of motion sickness, or being 10 to 20 years old? Interesting. Uh, with, with like a lower chance? 
which of these is associated with a lower likelihood of experiencing seasickness? Yeah. I think being between 10 and 20 years old. No, <gasps> it is being out of shape. Oh, which it's based on aerobic fitness. So, okay. Cause you, that, cause that's a, that's a vague term. It is, yeah, speci yeah, sure, it is specifically sure. aerobic fitness. Okay. Uh, and we have a clip. Okay. We're going to learn. Uh, if you would like to read it, here it is. It's not too surprising that your past history with motion sickness is the easiest and most reliable way to predict whether you'll get sick on your voyage at sea. Because seasickness is really just a kind of motion sickness. But weirdly enough, your level of aerobic fitness is a pretty good indicator too. Research shows that people who are in shape report higher levels of motion sickness. This isn't just a random correlation. Studies have found that getting into better shape can actually make motion sickness worse and it's not clear why that is. Fitness can affect hormone levels and the reactivity of your nervous system, so it may have something to do with that. On the other hand, several studies have drawn a connection between things like the rigidness of your stance when standing still and the likelihood that you'll get seasick, so it may be more about your muscles. Either way, there's a lot more of the mystery to unravel before we can predict, prevent, or treat seasickness perfectly. We're oh. back! We're back. I got another question wrong. Mm -hmm. What we're doing right now is we have sold a bunch of these postcards to people who want to financially support SciShow. Thank you so much to everybody who has done that. Uh, and we're signing them. I'm signing them. Savannah's stamping them so that we can uh, later put a little label on them and then send them to you. Take them to the post, good old post office and send them all across the world. Um, and I, we just, every time we sell five, we... And uh, yeah, people on TikTok, you can mm -hmm. also. Uh, we're here. We're here. Go to go to YouTube. It's where better on YouTube. It's better. Um, and we need to try crab cookies. That sounds very bad. I've had all the bad cookies. I have not had all the good cookies. There are crab cakes, which are good. I know. I can't eat crab anymore. Oh no. Yeah. That sucks. Ever since chemo, I'm allergic to shellfish. Weird. Yeah. I was always allergic to like clams. Yeah. But then I had a shrimp when I got done with chemo. I was like, it's like, it's go get shrimp and yeah. grits. And I was like, I have to puke. And I was like, why did I get so sick? And then I had shrimp like three days later. And I was like, oh, it's because I'm allergic to shrimp. That sucks. Um, but I have not tried crab yet. But I feel like they're very closely related. Yeah. My, my dad's allergic to shellfish. Yeah. Um, and we're actually not sure which of the specifics it is. But crab for sure does it to him so yeah it's one of those things allergies are weird allergies are so weird uh cookie you're are you are you avoiding the cookie i'm avoiding the cookie for sure um <laughs> it's like are there shellfish in the cookies there are not shellfish in the that's cookies that's too bad for me raven is so good about asking people for their allergens I guess and I'll such take this close one and see if i get another garlic which, which number is that it is nine all right This one I think is good. It's good. Okay, good. It's good. That is the that is the remaining cookie you have not had yet. That is the coconut lime cookie. Mm. So. So instead of garlic, it's coconut. Yes. You Great. Are, you are safe for now. Yeah. That's what you should do to cookies. Mm -hmm. You should not put garlic in them. Mm. I would eat the entire cookie. But there's a lot of food. <laughs> and as you can see here mm -hmm. which the only way to guarantee that hank has to eat every cookie is is if we sell out a postcard we gotta sell a lot of postcards which is a stretch goal what is a admittedly it is a reach but he might get questions right and just not have to eat cookies you never know here's what happens when you get a postcard one i sign it two savannah stamps it three you can leave us a little note uh, you can say something nice. James just got one and said, Hank, you can look at my apartment complex. <laughs> so you mm. can leave a note saying whether it's okay for me to do a house review of where you're at. We uh, will not show your house on stream. No. It is just Just Hank for my at. eyes. Um, you can also just tell us any information that you want to there. You can... Um, and then, uh, and then SciShow gets to be able to pay for its script editors and its fact checkers and all the people who make SciShow 
good and correct and captivating mm -hmm. so that we can continue to, to have more people get excited about their world. And in the same way that you might pay, you know, $5 a month for Disney Plus, I think it's more than that. Oh, yeah, it is more than that. They're like 10. Yeah, well, it is all of Disney. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You some small fraction of SciShow viewers will give us some money, and that is what makes it possible. So instead of us putting it behind a paywall, a paywall, a paywall, so that uh, everybody has to pay, or you can't get it, we just ask for money so that a very small portion of people do pay, so that the rest of the people can get it for free. So uh, I'm very grateful to people who support us uh, in various ways, including James, who lives in Kalamazoo. Wow, that's a fun. That's a fun. I know. City name. It is. Uh, oh, another way you can support us: merch. We have. We also just have fun things you mm -hmm. can buy, on on dftba.com slash scishow, including we have a we have our uh, orca hat hat. We have an orca hat hat. Orca hat hat. Oh yeah, there yeah. is a bucket hat. Yeah. Th um, things like that. There's, this there, looks like a really nice spot. I don't know a oh. lot about Kalamazoo. But it looks like you are, you got a lot of green around, a great number of soccer fields nearby. <laughs> That's a golf course. Um, and you know, you could, you got, you got, you got a lot of walkable uh, things nearby. We love, uh, we love a walkable area. Yeah. Mostly schools. Really easy to get to the schools. Kalamazoo seems like a nice little place. Nice. I think one of the things that when I moved to Missoula was... They can't hear you. Oh, yes, you're right. <laughs> that is one of the things that when I moved to Missoula was really great was how walkable everything is. It's like, yeah, wow. if you live in there, if you get the, like, the right spot, for yeah. sure. It's like, if I need to go to the grocery store, I don't have to get in a car. Whoa. <laughs> Wild. Yeah. Sometimes you still need a car. Because What's you your have grocery store? Groceries. Uh, I do both Orange Street and Walmart, depending on oh. yeah. the, the day. The need. Yeah. Or also occasionally Winco. Wow, that's yeah. a that's a weird third one. Yeah, it's just because it is the price is like pretty good. Yeah, like, but they got a lot of stuff, and they got a lot of stuff. So I, one of the things I like about Orange Street is that it does not have a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's like I can get from one side of the store to the other in a manageable amount of time. Yeah, and I'm not choosing between like 85 kinds of butter. Sometimes I feel like I've been presented with too many butters. <laughs> <clears throat> Hi from Sweden. I don't know if it's okay to ask. Well, I didn't read ahead, so let's just find out. Uh, is there any chance you could say hello? Just hello. I would seriously squeal and cry and die. Aww. Huge fan for years. Aww. Well, now I feel a little worried that I said hello when you're dead now. Hello. <laughs> I know you wanted Hank to say hello. But hello. <laughs> I hope you did not die. <laughs> Rig said Walmart, and Walmart. that's it. Walmart, yeah. Because um, I do grocery pickup. You do grocery pickup at yeah. Walmart? Wow. Yeah. Listen, I hate walking around a grocery store. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It yeah. is actually my least favorite thing in the world. There's no dying on the live stream. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a, that's against community guidelines. Yes, correct. Um, we've got some more sales coming. Uh, so we got one, two, three, four. Thanks to John, Christina, Peter, and James. Those are our four. Before we get another question, and I've gotten like all of them wrong except for the first one. I am, I am being a little choosy with which ones are harder now. So, okay. but you have tried every kind of cookie, and so now I will just kind of maybe we pick, could go I'll easier kinda, on me. I'll Thank just kind of, I'll just kind of pick one that's fun. Pick one at random. Yeah, which they're all fun. Don't ruin me. Are we at five? No, we have one more to Ooh, go. One more. One more to go. Tell me who's your housekeeper. What you keep in your house? These are all. Uh, 
It then like took a second for it to hit. Yeah, that's a line <laughs> in the song. Roll yeah. out. Yep. It's I, I'm like, this is such a <laughs> what in the world is in that room? What you got, got it in, in that, that room? room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this so much because it's it's just like a universal feeling. Yep. Where you're like at a person's house and you're like, but what's in that room? What's in there? It's probably the dog or the cat. Yeah. I was just thinking about like bedrooms. Did you ever feel like weird about your parents' bedroom growing up? Absolutely not. Oh, I totally did. <laughs> going in the parents' bedroom was very weird and very transgressive. Oh, zero. Absolutely not my experience. Okay. That is, uh, we, we had two TVs that had cable. One was in the living room, one was in the parents' bedroom. Yeah. And so it was just, someone was on the other TV. Oh, wow. Go in there. It's we fine. also had two TVs that had cable, and you were either watching the TV, and one was in the parents' bedroom, and you did not ever look at that one. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Am I weird? <laughs> Is Savannah weird? Let us know. Also, postcards available yes. at dftba.com slash scishow. If we sell one more, then... I will have to answer a question and maybe eat another gross cookie of the same kind that I've already had, which does make it worse. Uh, also, with these questions, they're all old SciShow Quiz Show questions. Yeah. Which is super fun. And also means Hank has, in fact, heard them at some point. Yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, but. That doesn't mean uh, anything. Uh, oh, I forget everything. Um, and thank you to everybody who got one of these postcards. It makes it so that we can cover topics that advertisers might not be super keen on mm -hmm. it means that we can have uh, a sort of robust team of like editorial folks and fact checkers to make sure that we get stuff right which uh is so important and you know as we have gotten more mature in this space from sort of a very simple beginning it uh has become much more clear to us that you really want to make sure that you get stuff right and that you don't mislead people with your headlines or your titles. And uh, so I wanted to sign a little postcard to a bunch of people who have supported us. And that's what we're doing. You can get these postcards if you go to dftba.com slash scishow. Thank you to everybody who has gotten one during the stream. There's a bunch of you. We just got two new orders. It's you cookie time. Us, it is a cookie time. You can leave us a little review if you want to, uh, or a, a little note. Like uh, Michael says, would definitely like a house review. Keep in mind, uh, where I'm at, I am a scuba diver. Ooh. Okay. You are a scuba diver. So the plan. And also thank you to Travis. The plan is question. The plan is cookie. And then the plan is house review. Okay. This is a good plan. All right. Uh, all right. Here's a fun one. Uh, this is number 12, Buzz. Buzz is here. Buzz is our social media manager. Buzz is, Buzz is managing the stream. <laughs> uh, many mammal species that live in groups set up territories where they can raise their young and forage in peace. Well, peace with one another anyway. In one six-year study, 47 females of this species were seen killing ground squirrels in their area. But none of these animals were killed for food. Mm. They were simply murdered, presumably so there would be less competition for resources. The question is, to which usually harmless species do these do these femme fatales belong to? Wow. Meerkats, lemmings, prairie dogs, or naked mole rats? Mmm. Mmm. Well, they have to have overlapping ranges, mm -hmm. so that's important. You say ground squirrel? Ground squirrel. The ground squirrel murderers. Okay. I think that meerkats and ground squirrels don't overlap. Lemmings and ground squirrels don't overlap. I'm guessing. Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going off vibes here. Mm. So that leaves us with naked mole rats and what was the other one? Prairie dogs. Prairie dogs. Prairie dogs and <sighs> ground squirrels, I think, almost definitely overlap. And naked mole rats are much smaller than ground squirrels. Does that mean anything? I mean, you could, it could be babies. They could be killing baby ground squirrels. Mm -hmm. And like naked mole rats are extreme. I also, though, I know a lot about naked mole rats and I feel like I would know this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to say prairie dogs. You are correct. Ah. It is prairie dogs. <laughs> uh, and we have a clip. 
The answer is C, prairie dogs. Prairie dogs might look cute and cuddly, but scientists have discovered that they're actually little murder machines. And just like animals that kill for food or to claim territory, the animals benefit from being serial killers. This discovery was made when scientists were studying white-tailed prairie dogs in western Colorado. A researcher happened to spot a female prairie dog tossing around the dead body of a smaller animal and was shocked to find out that it was a ground squirrel. The more the researchers looked, the more murders they spotted. Nearly a third of all females turned out to be ground squirrel killers. But they never ate their kill, they just left the bodies behind. So it wasn't clear why they were doing this until the researchers looked at the overall fitness of the killers and their offspring. Turned out, being a killer paid off, as both the individual and their offspring fared about three times better over time. In fact, the number of ground squirrels a female killed was the only variable that predicted her lifetime success. Things like her body size or aggressiveness towards other prairie dogs didn't seem to make a difference. The researchers think the ground squirrels compete with the prairie dogs for food, so killing the squirrels results in more resources for the mama dogs to use raising their young. A, a space there for a lot of people who don't. Yeah, we're back. We're back. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you. We've had, we've had since, since then, we've had one, two, three, four people get postcards. So truck it along. Thank wow. you so much. Um, I got that one right, though, so I don't have to eat a cookie, which is amazing news for me. Even good cookies at the moment don't feel super appetizing mm. after having eaten a pepperoni one with cheese on it. But Michael wanted me to do a house tour. And Michael Scubas. And Michael Scubas. I think this is with Michael. It is a private house tour. For Hank only. For me only. I don't know why you mentioned that you scuba. This does not look like a scuba e area. Maybe that's why. It's like, oh, dang. <laughs> where where does Michael go to scuba? Where then? do you go to scuba at? That is what you said, right? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a scuba diver. Unless what looks like not scuba is actually all water. Um, I mean, and it's Michael. a very cool place in, uh, in Seattle. I feel like that's safe to say. There's probably plenty of Michaels in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And I'm Google Street Viewing it right now. And they look to be uh, under construction during the Street View process. So new, new places. Nice little spot. Very, feels very uh, walk walkable area. You just come up here, there's a Popeyes, there's a Starbies. Okay, you're, you are, you are now. <laughs> Getting too close. Get, get a, give it a little uh, too many I'm details. Sk I'm skipping all the non-brand name places that, that they can go. Mm. Uh, they got, you know how, how you uh, slice a little pizza? A slice a little pizza? Yeah. Like four instead no, of eight? like what do you use to slice a little pizza? A pizza slicer? Little Caesars. Oh. Uh, little, 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 <laughs> little Caesars. Caesars. Little Caesars. <laughs> little Caesars. <laughs> There's a Little Caesars in this neighborhood, too. <laughs> Whoever walks to a Little Caesars, though? I don't know. You got to walk back carrying a lot of pizzas. Yeah. Carrying a lot of pizza pizzas. Man, that's a nice little area. Ooh, that's a Taco Bell. I wonder if Michael knows Fraser Crane. Because Fraser Crane is from Seattle? Yes. Uh, that's my only Seattle joke. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fraser apparently came back, which. It's really bad! Does not make me, like, just sort of, like, feel good about the state of American culture, honestly. It's not. Well, look. I, I have why a lot. Would of, it be? I have a lot of feelings about Frasier. You're big. Are you big like old school Frasier fan? Yes. Like that is my comfort sitcom oh, that I just play on repeat. Yeah. And part of what is so great about it is how like it's very. It, it feels like a stage play. Like it's kind of slow, and then when there's a big funny moment, there's like a hit to it. Uh, and the new Frasier is edited so fast, and I'm like, this is not. This is not Frasier. This is not my Frasier. 
<laughs> oh. Yeah. It's it's like the editing is weird. It's the editing. Like I would have thought it would just be the the writing. The characters are fine. The writing's like okay. It for me it was the pacing that was just very huh. like they're trying to cram too much into one episode. I'm like you don't have to. You don't have to resolve at the end. That was that's like the really interesting thing about Fraser is sometimes it's like Oh man, something bad happens, and now that's that's the end of the episode. Interesting. You have a lot of yeah. Frasier specific thoughts. I do. I almost I almost did a review of this show. <laughs> like and on YouTube. Like a, yeah, like a YouTube review, and then I just uh, didn't. I got I got distracted by how CapCut is crazy. So because <laughs> CapCut is crazy. Did you make a video about how CapCut is crazy? I did make a video about how mm. CapCut is crazy. CapCut's very strange. Yeah. There, there are AI people on CapCut that you can make say whatever you want. Oh, yeah. I've seen those templates. Yeah. I um, I just ordered... Well, I'll tell you the whole story. All right. I have a I have a alt on TikTok. And when I started it up, I it had like a fresh for you page. Mm -hmm. And I like watched a video for a little too long that was about like treating a disease with fake medicine uh -huh. because I am, you know, horrified and a little bit amazed by all of that. And, uh, and then it like gave me a bunch more content like that. And I was like, Oh, now I'm doing research. Yep. And so I have this like medical misinformation, TikTok account. And it also gets like medical misinformation specific ads. Mm, and that's... so I've started to like, so I bought a couple of the products, including like there's this this one video that's like, they say you shouldn't put Q-tips in your ears. It says it right on the box. Uh -huh. So buy this product and stick it in your yeah. ears instead. I've seen this. Yeah. So I got one of those. Oh boy. Uh, which I will of course not use because yeah. you should not do this. Don't. Um, the little thing. It's the thing with the camera and like camera, the light. Yeah. And like the little scoopy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Don't. Don't do that. You're not a you're not a doctor. No doctors can use that. Yeah. Sounds like a great way to puncture your eardrum. Um, and I, I think I might make a video about like the sort of, um, the infrastructure around like how TikTok isn't just like pushing these things. It's like teaching people how yeah. to lie yeah. or misinform and manipulate to get people to buy products that the, are bad for them. The back end of the TikTok shop. TikTok it's, shop the creator and scares me so bad. Yeah, that's the what like, the video is The about. like example video of like, you should buy this sweater. It's so great. I'm like, I feel like I'm being lied to. And this is the example video that they use to teach creators how to sell yeah. things. And I'm well, like, but then they actually, they, they randomly populate with an example of the highest converting video for every product. Yeah. And like for supplements, it's like, guys, it, this video is just for the guys. Ladies leave. And then it's like, guys, my mm -hmm. stuff has worked much better since starting the seaweed pill. Mm. And you're like, oh gosh. And it's like, you know, my yeah, it's it's all sort of like, you know, yeah, tales old as time, rhino horn stuff. Oh boy. Yep. We um, here at SciShow don't do that, and we fact check all yeah. of our stuff. And it's it we create quality content with good science in it. We have, we have gotten more than five more oh, sales. Oh, so we need to do a question. We need to do another question. And Mackenzie says you can look at my apartment. <laughs> okay. Which Mackenzie shares with her brother. Okay. 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 Right, this 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 one does not have a clip with it. This is just okay. Okay. Which of these distances is the longest? An astronomical unit. A light year, oh. a parsec, or a trillion kilometers. Oh, yeah, throwing me a trillion kilometers. I think a trillion is a lot. A trillion is a lot. Also, I have a note here that parsec Star Wars uses parsec wrong. Yes, they no. use it. They use it as time, but it is distance. Well, Star Wars has fixed this in canon. Okay, okay. which I can explain that to you, but like, okay. it's not important. Um, so they did the Kessel Run in less than seven parsecs or something like mm -hmm. that, uh, the, and which makes it sound like it's a unit of time. But the way that they do t uh, hyperspace travel is that if you can go faster, you can go shorter. Okay. So you can get closer to the things 
and the Kessel Run is a thing where there's lots of objects that you have to maneuver between. And so it's it makes the distance shorter if you can travel faster. Okay. Which is not something that they meant when they <laughs> wrote that script. That's something someone wrote later to fix it, which is but still it, I But is it is it le is it legends now or is it still canon? Uh, I think it's well I think it's all yeah. legends now. Uh, yeah. I Yeah, I, it's it's legends in that it's not in in a movie. I don't keep up with much Star Wars. It's in the solo movie. It is in the solo movie? Okay. Yeah, they did the Kessel Run in the solo movie. But do they talk about why it's parsecs? That's too nerdy for them to talk about in a movie. I watched that movie though. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to watch again. Well, um, which I... is the longest? I'm going to say a trillion kilometers. A parsec is the longest. Oh. So uh, an astronomical unit is the average distance between the Earth and the sun, which yeah, is the uh, shortest. 149,597,871 kilometers. Okay. A light year is a distance light can travel in a vacuum for one year, which mm -hmm. is about 9.5 trillion kilometers. A parsec is the distance from the sun oh. at which the Earth's orbit would appear to have a maximum width of one arc second. Oh, which would that's very specific. Which would be about thirty point eight trillion kilometers. Wow! So it's the longest. A parsec is the longest. So I, means, I wasn't even close. Nope. Which means cookie time. Oh, it means cookie time. Means cookie oh time. no! I should have fought harder for that. I still would have gotten it wrong. I don't know what a parsec is. It's a lot. You know what a parsec is in the context of Star Wars, which is something. Not not useful at all. <laughs> That's completely fake information. Sometimes fake information is. What was useful. grosser? The garlic was grosser. You mean strategically? You gotta yeah. go for the. All right. What number was that? Six. Six. Yay! Yay! Good cookie. That's a. It's. A, it, it, I'm pretty sure it is a good yay. Grapefruit. It, Raven even wrote yay <laughs> <laughs> on 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 the little cheats the little cheat sheet thing. So yay. Uh, there was one other thing on the some someone requested an apartment. Look at. Oh yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. There's a nice big building. Um, in uh, Massachusetts. It's quite, quite close to the uh, bay, question mark? Looks like a bay. Yeah, the bay. And uh, got some got some areas to go for nice little walks. Everybody's living in these walkable places. Yeah, so I weird. don't know. This might It might not feel, well, I guess it does probably feel walkable there. If you can get to a Starbucks in less than five blocks, then mm. I think you're in, in a walkable place or a coffee shop of any kind. Mm -hmm. there's like but this, yeah, this is like this is like Boston. Uh, there's this. Ish. There's you know how there's so many coffee shops in Missoula. There are so many coffee. We got a shops lot of coffee shops. It's true. Um, there's this like one section of town that is kind of a coffee desert, in that like <laughs> just no matter which direction you go, it is like like over a mile to, yeah. get, to get coffee. And that is like, whoa, what do you mean? There's not one like Where are you around the block. Like um, South Hills? No, like, uh, like reserve, but like the, the middle, the, the middle of reserve. Oh yeah. Like not like the North part, not, not Franklin down. Franklin to the fort. Yeah. Reserve, That's what they call that neighborhood. Reserve near that. Yeah. Which is that a real name for it, or is that something that Google came up with? Because Google, no, Google that's, came what, up with that's what that's what the, the neighborhood association okay. is called. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I've never lived in the neighborhood, but I I know from um, the uh, half as interesting people. Yeah. That Google names things just, just makes up names for oh, neighborhoods all the great. time. That's great. So. And I'm, then it sticks, probably. Yeah, it, yeah, it does. And I, I'm wondering, like, which ones in Missoula are real? <laughs> so I got to say a few thanks. Beth, thank you. Beth says, buying for my friend who has been a fan for a decade. She just moved to a new house across town. Feel free to do a house review. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh, that sounds like a nice area. And to uh, Dave, thank you, Dave. And Elise, thank you, Dave. Th Thank you, Elise. Elise says, hi, Hank. 
and I clicked and I made it go away. Hi, Hank. Please review my house. Sincerely, your moderator, Naya Dryad. I thought I re recognized that name. <laughs> um, let's review it. Gosh, this is weird. Ooh, right on the ocean. Delightful. Yeah. <laughs> I heard myself. You have about a 15 second delay, so yeah. we heard the ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute. If you are, if you are just joining us, uh, Hank is signing postcards, which you can purchase for $60 at dftba.com slash scishow or at the link in the description. And uh, I am putting stamps on them. And every time we sell five of them, uh, I ask Hank a trivia question. And if he gets that question wrong, he has to eat a cookie that is maybe nasty. But also maybe delicious. Maybe the last delicious. one I had was very good. Um, I was scrolling, at least I was scrolling around your neighborhood and I, f I saw some people and I was like, was one of those people you? <gasps> but I don't think it was. <laughs> but that would be weird. Uh, whoa, What's gosh. that? These are more stamps. Oh, I thought it was food. <laughs> no. There's so much food right here. You have several half-eaten cookies if you were hungry. The beach by my house has harbor seals. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> oh, have you seen that? That's going to be so great if there's an apocalypse. There's so much protein and fat in one of those guys. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just grab one. Mm -hmm. Just put it in the, put it in the deep freeze. Uh, have you seen the, the TikTok sound that somebody remixed a Katy Perry song to be about seals? No. It's so delightful. And people just keep, like, a, a bunch of aquariums are posting seal content with it. And <laughs> uh, there's somebody did a cute little animation. I love it. I'm signing postcards. What We're going to be here for another, like, 20 or 30 minutes. Yep. So if you have anything to say to us, uh, in chat, you can say it. If you also, you can say it when you leave a little message at uh, dftba.com slash scishow or um, if you, uh, or the link in the description. Beth also has left a thing, says, oh, I, that was the, that, I read that one already. Okay. I can look at this house as, as well in Arizona. It's so interesting how we all live in different places. That looks like Arizona right there. Your, I mean, your house does not appear to exist uh, <laughs> as of the last satellite photograph, which isn't super unusual for Arizona, I guess. I'm gonna look at the street level here. Yeah, 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 your house did not exist very recently is what I have discovered. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who's gotten postcards, whether now or previously, to support what we do at SciShow so that we can have all of our editorial people and so Savannah can host and do all the other, other things that Savannah does. Producing. Produce. A lot, a lot of producing. No one knows what that means. I, I don't either. <laughs> a lot of people be like, oh, yes, yeah, so what do you do? And I'm like, I, I mean, I am in charge of the TikTok, and then I help out with the main channel. And a lot of that is solving problems. It's like, oh man, this script's gonna be late. Okay, where do we do? What where do we what are we filming instead? Yeah. Uh and then right. that's that's a lot of it. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot, it's mostly like, you know. Solving problems. Yep. When and, problems occur. Yeah. Yeah. If only problems never occurred. I feel like if problems never occurred, life would be very boring. Yeah, I'd take it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> and if I, if, if for every five people who buy, and I think that we've got three right now, we ask me a question, and if I get the question wrong, I have to eat a cookie, and the cookie might be disgusting, uh, but also might be delicious. And if everyone could just stop buying, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> no. Keep buying. <laughs> We're, I think we're at like one more until the we next do have, one. We have one, one more. Uh -huh. Hannah has just gotten a, a postcard as well. Thank you very much, Hannah. 
I just got the words to roll out in my head. Well? Ever since Pilates this morning, when my Pilates instructor said, maybe you should roll out your shoulder. And I was like, uh, tell me who's your housekeeper. What do you keep in your house? What do you keep in your house? And then I was like, I don't want to roll out my shoulder. And she was like, why not? And I was like, because I want to eat food before I go have disgusting cookies mm. at SciShow. What what was your lunch? What did you have? What what was your lunch that this is the dessert for? Um, my lunch was a crispy McChicken sandwich. Mm. What mm. McCrispy is what they're called. Mm. And that's all. Mm. I I don't like to get the fries if I can avoid it. Yeah, it, it adds it adds a lot. Yeah, it but does. also sometimes you just really want fries. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I was sort of in a spot where I was like, I'm not, I, I'm, yeah. and, I'll, and I got a smoothie for Catherine, who is sick on the way home. Aww. And I, so I got myself a smoothie, which is like fries. But there's fruit in it. Yeah. And also it was green, so probably uh, Yeah, like that means it's healthy. Yeah. There's, there's antioxidants or something in there. Yeah. Um. And the, the link to get the things to support SciShow and the work that we do is in the description, or you can go to dftba.com slash SciShow. dftba.com slash SciShow. One more means one more nasty cookie. One more means one more. Can we do it before the end of the show? You can I, also leave us a little note. I think we can. When you are checking out, and you can tell us whether we can look at your house, and you can tell us anything you want to. You can tell us what your favorite color is. Maeve is listening while doing science. What kind of science are you doing, Maeve? That's cool. Geode says, I guess it's walkable here since it's only a couple of blocks to the nearest coffee shop, though it's harder walking in the winter. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. It's, it's, this has actually been a great winter for walking in Missoula. Great for walking, bad for future fire. Worried about future fire? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, it has been. Share secrets. You can also tell me a secret if you want to. Whoa. Uh, you can say, this is a secret, and I won't tell people. I'll just read your secret. How do you feel? But also just note, the people at the, it's possible other people can see this secret. Yeah. So don't have it be too much of a secret. <laughs> DFTV, I think, will be able to read your secret. Yeah. Whoever, yeah, whoever is is doing the, actually, I think it's going to be Aaron who's printing out the labels, may be able to see your secret. I am also doing science ecology. Maeve says, I do neuroscience at the University of Rochester. Did you come see me when I was in Rochester, Maeve? That would have been a miss. I was at RIT, so maybe you were like, no, screw him. <laughs> He's at the wrong one. Uh, one of our staff writers... Emma uh, has a PhD in neuroscience, I believe. Got her PhD fairly recently. It was definitely like an announcement on our Slack being like, I defended, I'm done. And we're like, yeah, Emma. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. So every time Emma brings a script idea about related to neuroscience, I'm like, oh, this is tasty. It's very fun. Nice. Maeve did come see me in Rochester. Nice. Hello and thank you. It was a good time. Super secret. Cheese is even nicer if you put it on bread and heat it. That yeah. That was a secret. Yeah. That was a secret. That's a big secret. And you read it out loud. Oh, shoot. Well, it was in the chat. Oh, okay. And then it's also <laughs> a secret. <laughs> Just for clear, if it was, if it was in the, if it was a regular secret, I wouldn't have told you. People are holding to and not wanting to make me eat more listen listen raven made these cookies it's true and did such a great job making these cookies yeah. and you're going to let them sit here uneaten wow 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 can't believe i can't and also i want to get another question answered yeah. i want to know i want to find yeah. out i have a whole stack of old scishow quiz show questions um, and I, I even found the old SciShow Quiz Show. Yeah. Uh, where was that cards. hiding? Uh, just upstairs. Okay. Under, near, near where the printer is. Okay. And I was really happy because the first, like, eight of them, I was able to print out actually, like, on the paper, like, directly on the card. And I'm oh. like, nice. 
And then the rest of them, it just decided it didn't want to do that anymore. Oh, and so, you like made those. Yeah. So then oh. the rest of them I had, I did have to like cut out and like put <laughs> on here. Oh, oh. But, but I got them. Very, very printer. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I said thank you to Michael and Travis and Chelsea. I think I, I, mi I missed Michael, Travis and Chelsea. But also thank you to Mackenzie, Kyle, and Norma Jean. We got another order. Somebody came through. Woo! Somebody came through. It was Dougal. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dougal. That's thank five. Dougal. That's five. All right. Mm. Well, you get to learn something delightful about wombats. So. Okay, I know some things about wombats. All right. I met one once. Aw. It was really intense. Whoa. It, it was just a... It was a high energy moment in its okay. life. It felt like okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very very stimulated wombat. Yeah. All right, uh, this is number sixteen. Buzz. Uh, wombats are famous for their cube shaped poops, but they have all no bleh. but they have another special butt related adaptation. What is it? They blend in perfectly with the landscape. Their butts do. This is the question. So which it, which is it? Okay. So is it? They blend in perfectly with the landscape. They can be used to smash the skulls of predators. What? They can excrete a pheromone that attracts prey, or they excrete a substance that we use in vanilla flavoring. Well, it's not that last one because that's beaver. That is beaver. Um, I do think about that all the time. Also, blue raspberry, apparently. Oh. Yeah. Um, what was the third one? I got zoned out for a second. Uh, they, excre <laughs> they excrete a pheromone that attracts prey. Okay, weird. And then they crush okay. prey? They crush prey? They blend in perfectly with the landscape. Okay. They can be used to smash the skulls of predators. Of predators. They excrete a pheromone that attracts prey, or they excrete a substance that we use in vanilla flavoring, which we know you is know, not that. I don't think that wombats eat living animals, so I don't think it's that one. Uh, I don't think that they blend in with their environment with their butts. But I do think that their butts are very strong, very strong, and could crush the skull of a predator. You're going to go with B? I'm going to go with B. Yeah. Yes! You're right. Uh, wombat butts are hard, and we have a clip. <laughs> Wombat butts are hard. They're made of four separate bony plates and are covered in layers of fat, skin, and cartilage. That makes them almost rock solid and perfect for both defense and offense. If a wombat is attacked, it can dive into its burrow and essentially use its butt to plug up the entrance. Then it uses its hiney as a shield against whatever animal is trying to get inside. But some research also suggests that wombats can attack with their butts too. If a predator really won't leave them alone, they can use their rumps to smash their enemies against the roofs of their burrows, apparently with enough force to fracture their skulls. Mm -hmm. We're Hello. back. Thank you to Dougal and Justin and Jamie who have ordered postcards. Um, I'm not sure how Justin and Dougal did it, but they got a discount. <laughs> what? I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, but Justin says... Hank and SciShow team, thank you for all that you do. I've watched a lot of interviews, talk shows, podcasts with you as, as a guest lately, and you seem like a great person to sit down and have a crazy existential talk with. I appreciate everything that you do and contribute towards. Hope that that next cookie is especially awful. <laughs> I have two, three, I have three things that I did in LA that are not out yet. Oh, wow. I did it. I finally counted. I did eight things, eight, like, YouTube shows mm -hmm. slash podcast things while, while I was in Los Angeles. And um, in in seven days. Eight things in seven days is too many things. And with comedy every night. That's way too many things. That's, I can, I can do math. Eight plus seven? Fifteen things. <laughs> I play D&D &D, and this happens every time I roll. Oh, God. Every time. I'm so bad at basic arithmetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. And then I also filmed four videos for myself. Nice. So, and two of those are out. And there are two more. But one of them is going to be hard. Hard? It's going to be difficult to edit. Hmm. And 
I think it's like one more step left. Okay. Before I like have to interview somebody. Okay. So it's fine. Oh, well, I'm interested. Thanks. Uh, Jamie says, my favorite color is green. I can't think of a single shade I don't like. 10 out of 10 color. Green is very good. Yeah. A lot of my wardrobe has green in it, unfortunately. Because it means that I can't, can't wear, wear it. on green screen. <laughs> I know. It's really, I'd never screen. buy anything with green on it because we shoot on green screen. Mm -hmm. Ever. Never do it. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's like I have a really good shirt that has like a little flash of green on it somewhere. And it's like. Well, I could wear this, yeah. and then the editors will get mad at me, yep. so I'm going to not. <laughs> also, yellow does it, too. Yeah, the, I'll go in, and I'll be, like, wearing a blue shirt, and they're like, you can't have that. And I'm like, it's yeah. blue. Yeah. It's, like, definitely blue. A lot of the, like, Pizza John shirts, yeah. like, you'll be like, oh, this is fine. And then, like, you get into editing, and it's like, green screen said no. <laughs> green screen, we we may we may be doing th more things. Well, we already are doing mm -hmm. more things that are not green screen. Mm -hmm. Um and that's part, that's not the whole reason, but like there's a post production reason. Like we want to yeah. be efficient. We want to yeah. like use everybody's time well, and use our you know use your money well if you bought a postcard. So we are looking at other ways to mm -hmm. shoot that uh, are just a little bit easier on folks. Yeah. Another thing with green screen is like when when you're editing and the the editing program has to like do the green screen thing, uh, it takes longer to like export the video out from the program you're using because it has to do all of that work yeah. to calculate it so it just literally takes longer where the editor's computer is just it's just sitting there doing all those calculations and you can't really use your computer so you're just sitting so. there eating cookies yep thank you to laura and peter as well there was only one more we could squeeze one more question into the end it. of this we could absolutely do that we, we got, could do it got about eight minutes we sell if we sell one more postcard in the next few minutes. We be got time like, for one more. Be like Lauren or Peter or Jamie or Justin or Dougal or Hannah or Beth or Dave or Elise or Norma Jean. Right now, I'm signing postcards, if it's not clear. Yes. We're, Savannah is stamping them. And uh, these are postcards that we're going to send to people who have supported SciShow mm -hmm. to say thank you for helping us exist. Mm -hmm. um, it's 60 bucks. Plus sales tax if you have that where you are, and uh, mm -hmm. that's like five dollars a month mm -hmm. for the year, mm -hmm. which is how we fund the show. Also, I don't know if I, we've, I don't know if we've mentioned this yet. These were designed by Amy Roberts, the art director of SciShow, one, one of the many people that work on the show. Yeah. sitting here for a second. This I was like, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't have any postcards. Check this out. Uh, an episode. What about an orange screen? I bet there's a reason why green is good. Oh, face face. It, it's human. Human skin tones are oh. like very warm colors, like around the like orangey. Yeah. So if you use an orange screen, you're getting all of that. Yeah. That's why it's generally blue or green. It's like I know like a lot of big, big budget Hollywood folks like the blue ones. Yeah. I feel like it used to be blue screen. Yeah. Like that's what, that's what people would say. Yeah. But then. Uh, I'm not sure why the shift happened, but it's yeah. also shifting back because you definitely see blue. Yeah. It, it might be something to do with like. Uh, I bet it's a more common clothing color. Probably. I bet it also has something to do with like uh, the switch from analog to digital. Maybe. Because I think it, yeah. like I'm thinking about like behind the scenes of uh, the Star Wars prequels. And um, there's definitely, they definitely use green screen there. Hmm. And now it's and that was digital. blue again. And now it's blue again. So I, I remember when I first started in TV uh, in like the late 90s. You they were they were like you can you can never like do a graphic that's like got a lot of white because it makes TVs buzz. Oh weird. And I was like, is that? <laughs> are we worried about like CRT <laughs> things now? Like I feel like we can move on from that. But no, they're like no. The, the, if it's all white, it just like it's, it's so much energy that the tubes wow. can't handle it, and they go. Bram! People don't like it. I was like, okay, well, Weird. I'll avoid all white graphics. Um, it's a different world now. Mm -hmm. 
we have moved on. He didn't read the postcard comment from Chelsea. <gasps> Chelsea! Ask him to go back. Sorry, Chelsea! I didn't get one from Chelsea. There was no comment. <gasps> How new? Was on the on the website? Well, Chelsea, send me a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Two notes from Peter didn't get read out either? How do we, how do we, how do you know? I don't have a, I don't have, yeah, Peter also doesn't have a note. That is strange. Yeah. You'd think I would know how this smart works. Well, I, but... yeah, I mean. No notes from customer. It says it in the upper right hand corner of my little screen. No notes from customer. I'm sorry. That's weird. Well, we have four more minutes. We need one more postcard oh, and four more minutes. We need one more minute, one more postcard and four more minutes. Have we gotten one? I don't know. I'm not sure. Yes, we have. We have? From Justin. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. And Justin's note did come through. And it says, hi again. Sorry about the discount. I didn't realize it got applied. <laughs> uh, my Capital One browser extension applied. Oh, God. Applied uh, a code automatically. I hope this uh, helps with your future endeavors and let me know what the code was. Thank you. I will cancel that one. That's. Thank Hilarious. you, Justin. <laughs> well, get that browser extension though. Yeah. <laughs> that's no, that's fine. That's fine. You can absolutely use. You can use a discount whenever you got one. But I will cancel that. <laughs> I will cancel that <laughs> discount code. <laughs> that's an old one. That that Capital One browser extension knows about. Uh, Rebecca also says this is amazing. I hope you could do these videos forever. Good luck, Becky. All right. Okay. Hit La me. Last. Actually, not that one. Last question of the stream. Uh, chlorophylls are the main biological green pigments in the world. This is number 15. Uh, For but, green, green fans. Mm -hmm. But most animals can't produce them. Still, you see green in all sorts of creatures, from lizards to birds to beetles. Some insect species, like hawk moths and their relatives in the family Sphingidae, have several green stages in life, including green eggs and green caterpillars. But how do these bugs go green? A, they use structural color. B, they mix yellow and blue pigments. C, they steal chlorophylls from plants. Or D, they actually make a green pigment. I mean, that last one sounds right to me, but it obviously isn't, right? I don't know. I mean, yeah. I do know. I Can you give me A and B again? Uh, they use structural color or they mix yellow and blue pigments. Mm. They mix yellow and blue pigments. That is correct. Hey! <laughs> uh, That's great. That means somebody else can eat those. <laughs> uh, and we got the clip. The answer is B. They mix yellow and blue pigments. You may have heard that blue pigments are rare in animals but they're actually used all the time by green insects. Insectocyanins are a class of blue pigment proteins that, as the name implies, are made by insects. And they're what helps turn things like moth eggs and caterpillars green. The eggs get their insectocyanins from their parent, but hawk moth and hornworm caterpillars synthesize the stuff in their epidermis. Then they either store it in special compartments or secrete it into their hemolymph basically their version of blood. Ultimately, that blue pigment combines with yellow carotenoids from the insect's diet or their parents to make them green, just like a first grader in art class. Those carotenoids are especially important too. If you raise these moth larvae in laboratory conditions with carotenoid-free food, they never turn green. They'll remain a vibrant blue until they become usually blander color adults. And intriguingly, those adults don't actually produce the stuff they pass on to their young. All the insectocyanin in their hemolymph was made when they were caterpillars. Hello. Hello. And by that, we mean goodbye. <laughs> and by that, we mean goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, uh, everybody, uh, so much 
for for being here for this live stream. For the people whose notes didn't come through, we will investigate. But let me know uh, if you didn't have one of those. I am on Twitter and Threads, uh, and also at Hank and John at Gmail .com. Um, so thank you for everybody who who donated, uh, and thank you to uh, folks who gave us, who made me eat terrible cookies. I still have a lot of postcards to sign. We did an okay job. We got some done. There's a big chunk. Here's a, there's a. Oh my gosh. Here's everything that's done. Oh yeah, that's so not even close. It's not even close to the majority, but there's there's quite a bit down there. To the majority? Major majority. To the ma okay. Not even close to the majority, but not it's close, it's yes. quite a bit. It's we got some work done. Yeah, we got some work done. Thank you to Buzz for helping run the show, and everybody uh, at SciShow for also helping make it work. You know, uh, uh, probably there's a bunch of people watching right now, moderating comments, etc., making sure that we're trying to do things correct. Uh, so, hopefully. The sound got better, and et cetera. Um, and of course, thank you to everybody who has either supported us on Patreon, been a channel member, given us money for postcards, however you support SciShow. But of course, we also know that the whole reason we ask for money is so that people who cannot afford to pay get SciShow for free. So thank you for everybody who likes what we do, no matter what, uh, because that's why we do it. Um, we had a really good time just hanging out. Yeah. It's nice to just like do stuff. Uh, oh, and also thank you to Raven for making the disgusting cookies. And also the delicious ones. And also the disgusting ones. And also ones. the delicious <laughs> ones. Especially thank yeah. you for making the delicious cookies. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you. Who made this? Did Olivia make that squirrel? I, I feel like Olivia told me who made that when like maybe, she brought it over, and I don't remember. I, I can't remember. It was definitely someone we know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you for joining us, squirrel, as well. Um, have a lovely rest of your day, and I am, yeah, I'm going to go make SciShow and also Microcosmos. That's what the rest is on the rest of my calendar for the day. I'm going to go eat lunch. because Have a cookie! Mm, maybe not. <laughs> You've got the guide. <laughs> I do. Bye. Bye. Thank you.